Hi everyone and welcome back to one more part on radiographic testing. So far uh, we have learned about uh, how the image is formed okay? and we have also seen uh, in last couple of lectures how the image quality is uh, controlled and what are those parameters uh, which control the image quality. Okay? So, now that we know how the image is formed, uh, we can talk about uh, the exposure as to how exactly the exposure is done you know and what kind of uh, things are used uh, for exposure and uh, for a particular uh, material of given thickness, uh, what are the exposure uh, parameters particularly the exposure time, how it is decided. Okay? So, that is what uh, we are going to discuss in today's lecture. So, first uh, let us talk about uh, uh, how the film is loaded uh, when you expose it uh, for a, a particular exposure. Okay? So, in order to capture the image uh, on an X-ray film, uh, you need to uh, take it to the machine right? and you have to uh, load it in the machine. But as you all know by now, these X-ray films are uh, sensitive to light. If you expose the X-ray film uh, to light, then they will darken and once they darken, you cannot use them for capturing the image. Okay? So, when you uh, take this film uh, to load it into the instrument, uh, this film has to be protected from light. Okay? And in order to do that, uh, you need some kind of enclosure which will uh, do this job of protecting the film uh, from visible light. And that is why uh, this kind of sample holders are used for loading the film first. Okay? Uh, this kind of uh, sample holders that you see over here okay? and this can be, uh, uh, this is available, uh, this kind of sample holders are available in different sizes uh, depending on the size of the sample that you have and it has a uh, chamber inside if you open it you could see that right like this. Okay? So, you can keep the film inside this and you could see there is a uh, cushion for the film against uh, you know scratching and all that so that the film is uh, not damaged when you keep it inside. So, this cushion is provided for that and you can keep this and then uh, you can close this. Okay? Once you close this, uh, this, be uh, this becomes light tight that means this will no longer be exposed to uh, light. Okay? You could also see inside this uh, cassette uh, there are few more things. You, if you remember we talked about uh, intensifying screens uh, which are used to enhance the image quality or to enhance the efficiency of image formation. And as I told you uh, the intensifying screens have to be kept uh, right over the film. Okay? So, here you do not really see anything externally, but this still has an intensifying screen inbuilt inside this uh, chamber over here. Okay? So, it has two walls as you could see the top one and the bottom one. Okay? So, in the top one in inside this black layer, uh, the intensifying screen is inbuilt. Okay? It could be a metallic uh, intensifying screen or if, if you want to use those uh, fluorescent salt intensifying screen, they can also be used as a thin coating on the top surface. Similarly, uh, the bottom surface also uh, here just below the cushion, uh, there is a thin lead screen so that uh, you can address those uh, backscatter radiation which comes from this bottom surface. And, uh, Apart from that, uh, this material if you see uh, the material of this cassette is made of such a material which is uh, low absorbing to x-rays. So, that the x-rays can easily pass through it and on this uh, surface as such uh, there is no attenuation to the intensity of the x-rays. Okay? So, this has to be made of a material uh, which is low absorbing. For example, aluminum can be used. In fact, this uh, cassette that you see over here, this is made of an aluminum alloy. Okay. Uh, so, this is what is being used for loading the x-ray film into the x-ray machine. 
you might have seen this while doing uh, medical radiography also uh, they have a cassette like this uh, maybe a different size this cassette is being held in close contact uh, with our body when a body part is being uh, imaged uh, for uh, medical radiography okay Then uh, on this, uh, the sample is kept on the top surface. Okay, so right below this, uh, you have the intensifying screen, and then you have the sample. Okay, so if you remember, uh, we also discussed that the intensifying has to be uh, in between uh, the sample and the film, and it should be also there on the bottom surface so that the backscattered radiation can be uh, addressed. Okay, so, so this is uh, one aspect of exposure as to how to load the film uh, for a for a particular exposure. Okay. Now, when you uh, take a sample and you uh, do this exposure uh, for capturing the X-ray image, what you control uh, on the control unit is primarily the exposure time. for a given tube voltage and given tube current. Okay. This tube voltage and tube current on the other hand can also be varied uh, for a given exposure time. Okay. So, that means, uh, first you need to decide uh, what should be the exposure time uh, for a given tube voltage and a given tube current. Okay. So, this time would depend on uh, what kind of sample you have. That means, the material of the sample and uh, the thickness of the sample. Okay. So, these are the two parameters which will primarily uh, decide the exposure time for a given voltage and current. And in order to do that, you uh, need a relationship uh, which could be used uh, to decide this exposure time based upon uh, the thickness of the material. So, this uh, relationship or the equation comes from two laws. One of them is this one that we have already discussed probably by now. The intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Okay. So, if I be the intensity and L be the distance, uh, this will be the relationship between in X-ray intensity and the distance between the source and the sample. Okay. And that is why this is known as inverse square law. So, this means uh, for two different intensities I 1 and I 2, this will be equal to this. Okay. So, this is uh, inverse square law and the intensity uh, is a direct output uh, of the number of electrons uh, which are impinging on the anode uh, per unit area per unit time. So, that means, the intensity is dependent on the tube, uh, the tube current okay. and that is why uh, you have this particular relationship I is inversely proportional to exposure time. If the tube current is high, then the intensity will be higher and as a result of that, uh, the exposure time will be lower and vice versa. Okay. So, this means uh, I times T is a constant. or uh, the relationship between the tube current I and the T is reciprocal and that is why uh, this particular relationship is known as uh, reciprocity law. So, 
So, you have these two laws or these two relationships uh, reciprocity and inverse square. And these two can be combined into one in order to decide that x was a time. So, if you can uh, if you combine uh, these two it will give rise to this particular relationship. Okay, and this will tell you uh, as you vary the thickness or the distance L, how the time t should vary or if you vary the current uh, for a given distance, then also uh, how the time of exposure should vary. Okay. For example, if you have a distance of uh, 1 meter and a tube current of uh, 20 milliamps. And for a given material, let us say you have uh, used an exposure time of 10 seconds. Okay. Now, if you change uh, any of these, either the distance uh, or the current, then the time will change according to this relationship that we derived just now based upon those two laws. For example, if you change L to 0.8 meter from uh, 1 meter, then uh, for the same tube current, uh, the time needed uh, for a similar uh, quality of image, the exposure time for that will be 0.8 because this uh, varies as the square of the distance. So, for 1 meter it was 10 second and for 0.8 meter it will be 6.4 second. Okay. So, this is how if you vary the distance uh, the time will vary according to this relationship and if you change the current also from 20 milliamps to 16 milliamps now and uh, the distance also is changed to 0.8 meter. So, for that case when you change both distance and uh, the tube current, then again from this uh, particular relationship uh, you can find out uh, what will be the time and in that case uh, it will be 8 seconds. Okay. So, like that uh, based upon uh, this particular equation, this is how we can find out uh, for a particular tube current and particular uh, sample to uh, source distance uh, what should be the exposure time. But here uh, this is about uh, the distance between uh, the source and the sample. But as I said before, uh, this will also depend on uh, the sample thickness and when you take into account the sample thickness also, then uh, you need to use these uh, calibration charts which are obtained uh, for different sample thicknesses and this has to be supplied by the manufacturer of the instrument who has to do uh, this calibration and provide you this kind of exposure charts for uh, different sample thicknesses for a particular sample to source distance. Okay. So, generally the sample to source distance is uh, kept at 1 meter because this is convenient to use when you convert uh, the exposure time for some other distance. So, this uh, chart is in between uh, this uh, uh, exposure chart or the exposure uh, plots that you have, it is in between the exposure.
So, this is in terms of times that uh, current uh, into the exposure time. And this has to be uh, calibrated for a particular material against the thickness. Okay. So, it can be done for example, on a steel sample uh, for a fixed uh, sample to source distance of 1 meter and then, then you vary the thickness and uh, obtain the data and when you plot the data at different uh, tube voltages, uh, this kind of uh, curves will be obtained. For example, if you are using 100 kilo volt like this, so it will, it has to be done at uh, different uh, tube voltages and different sample thicknesses. Over the entire uh, tube voltage that the instrument offers, okay, like this. So, when you uh, do the radiographic testing, uh, before you load the sample into the machine, you should first refer to these exposure charts, uh, which are provided by the manufacturer for that particular instrument. Okay. And you then see what is the thickness of the sample and based upon that thickness and the tube voltage uh, that you are using, you see what is the exposure needed. So, this exposure could be in terms of uh, milliamps minute or a milliamps second and uh, this tube current is already known. Uh, it is generally in the range of uh, 5 to 10 milliamps for most of the for, for most of the machines. Okay. And once you know this, then you simply divide this uh, by the tube current and from that you will get the time. Okay. So, this is how based upon this exposure charts, you have to first decide the exposure time for a given material of a particular thickness. Okay. So, this is done for steel, but uh, this has to be uh, obtained for other materials also and you may or may not have uh, this kind of uh, plots for all the materials, but what you can have for convenience is you can have this conversion of uh, steel to uh, any other uh, material thickness. So, you can convert any material thickness to an equivalent uh, steel thickness. So, if you have uh, a sample made of any other material, that uh, thickness has to be converted to an equivalent steel thickness and then that thickness can be used for this kind of charts uh, which are generated for steel samples. Okay. I can give you example for that. Let us say you have a composite plate or before that uh, just let me tell you uh, what are the conversion factors uh, for different materials to convert their thickness into an equivalent uh, steel thickness. Okay. Uh, Let us say uh, copper <coughs> aluminum and lead for these three materials, if you want to convert their thickness into an equivalent uh, steel thickness, that would depend on uh, what is the X-ray energy that is being used. So, we can see it for different X-ray energies.
So, for uh, 300 uh, kilo volt for example, uh, for copper the conversion factor would be 1.5. Okay. Similarly, for aluminum it is uh, uh, 0.19 and for lead it is 17. Okay. So, you could see depending on the material it varies over a wide range. So, let us say for example, uh, if you have a five, 10 centimeter of the copper uh, that will be equivalent to uh, 15 centimeter of steel thickness. Okay. Then as you decrease the X-ray energy, this would also decrease like this for copper it will be 1.45 at 250, 1 1.4 at 200 kV and 1.3 at 150 kV. Similarly, for aluminum it is 0 0.17, 0 0.16 and 0 0.12. For lead it is 15 at 250 kV, 13 at 200 kV and 11 at 150 kV. So, based upon this kind of conversion charts uh, which are readily available, the thickness of any material can be converted to an equivalent uh, steel thickness and then uh, you would be able to use those exposure charts which are obtained for uh, different thicknesses of steel. Okay. Yeah, we can take an example as uh, I was telling you. Let us say you uh, have a composite uh, plate. which is uh, made of three different uh, metal sheets, aluminum uh, 1.5 mm, copper 3.6 mm and lead. 0.9 mm. Okay. Okay, so, let us say you have a composite plate like this which has these three layers uh, made of uh, three different materials having this kind of thicknesses. Okay. So, for a tube voltage uh, let us say uh, 200 kilo volt or 250 kilo volt, if you want to uh, decide the exposure time uh, for a given tube current, then you first have to convert the thickness of this particular plate into a steel thickness. So, the thickness of this plate is uh, 1.5 plus uh, 3.6 plus 0.9 which is 6 mm. Okay. So, this uh, 6 mm thickness of this material has to be converted into an equivalent uh, steel thickness for a given uh, X-ray energy or tube voltage. And we have already seen uh, what are the different conversion factors for different materials for this three material at a particular tube voltage, let us say 200 kV. So, just now we saw that uh, at 200 kV for copper, aluminum and lead if you convert their individual thicknesses. So, in this case we have 3.6 mm of copper and for copper the conversion factor at 200 kV is 1.4. So, that will be the equivalent thickness for copper. For aluminum it is 1.5 mm and the conversion factor at 200 kV is uh, 0.16. Similarly, lead is 0.9 mm and the conversion factor is 13. Okay. So, 
So, this will give you uh, the thickness at a particular voltage. So, if you calculate this, this will be 17 mm of steel. Okay, so, this is how uh, any material thickness can be converted into a steel thickness when you want to use that exposure chart for calculating the exposure time. Okay. So, with this uh, we will we come to the end of uh, this particular lecture. So, for today this is all I will have. So, I am going to stop here today and uh, I am going to see you again next time uh, for rest of the things that we have for this particular technique. So, I am going to stop here today. Thank you for your attention.